fresh water clean air pollination climate regulation services provided by natural ecosystems are taken for granted yet it is critical to place values on them so they can continue to underpin social and economic development in the western ghats where population densities are very high it is essential to forge partnerships with the people living in and around forests grasslands and wetlands to help conserve these critical ecosystems and the essential services they provide environmental services across the world across every ecosystem that we live in are very valuable so this particular project looks at water in the kunur basin looks at non timber forest produce in the hasnur belt through these flows we are trying to understand how can we create a payment for ecosystem services by which these ecological systems are managed when we are looking at payment for ecosystem services we are trying to first add value to the resources where protections are required so if through the pes project and the ecosystem services value they get a better benefit they have a better say in the market the nilgiri biosphere reserve uh, which is uh, the first biosphere reserve declared by unesco it is an area which has very rich biodiversity and is also very well populated and uh, in the recent uh, decades it's been heavily urbanized as well the project is uh, focused on uh, the town of kunur the project is basically looking at a concept called the payment of ecosystem services the idea is that uh, for an ecosystem services to be provided some kind of conservation activity has to happen in the upstream area and whether the users of the water resources in the downstream and the people who are involved in conservation in the upstream they can be linked through a an a kind of a transaction which involves a payment to compensate for the services that are being provided in the water project the challenge is to mainstream it with the government because we don't want local people to uh, take the burden of this payment we would want to create this framework by which we can involve the district administration or the kunur municipality in this case that they can allocate some of their budget lines towards something like this because ultimately it is not only the water that is supplied to the communities and the households which is the which is a, an important issue but it is also whether there is enough water for nature for the ntfp we are looking at a fair price for the tribal communities who collect the non timber forest produce which directly helps in terms of selling their produces at a better price and plowing back that funds and that profit back into the foundation or back into the different institutions we are here working with uh, many communities uh, across uh, the nilgiri biosphere reserve these are uh, mainly hunter gathering communities they lead their life with a mixture of ntfp collection and uh, agriculture the valuation of uh, non timber forest products is very low so we are trying to establish the different kinds of values that should be given to ntfps be it ecological or cultural honey for example people follow some uh, methods by which conservation is assured of bees and uh, in the production units we have also ensured certain quality criteria so uh, that is been a kind of a feature which has helped in in the conservation of both bees and ensured pollination similarly in amla and other things to collect mature fruit to harvest in a certain way so in the market we have to include various other aspects and this is the model that we are trying through the payment for ecosystem services cepf is the first grant to able to get us on this road of payment for ecosystem services ps is a good way to show how things from the ground can work upwards and how local people can make some changes and make their resources in a much more 
protective in a sustainable way. In Maharashtra, there are six districts where this landscape of northern western Ghat is uh, there. As you come uh, to, to the north, we don't have many perennial streams, uh, but within forests, there is enough water for wildlife. For example, uh, if you look at the sacred forest, you know, most of the sacred groves, they have the uh, perennial source of water. Sacred groves are extremely important for maintaining those water catchments. In this area, there are no indigenous people. But uh, these people are linked to forest in various ways. They need forest for their firewood needs. They need forest for their water needs. Most of the land is privately owned. Unfortunately, in these forests now, at least in Ratnagiri district, we don't have huge timber left. They have cut most of the big timber for making charcoal. When we did this biodiversity assessment, people could understand that there are more than 300 plant species, a lot of birds and stuff. Because of this biodiversity assessment report, uh, we could work with people and then, to our surprise, um, people in the village, they really picked it up. Therefore, it served two purposes. One is awareness generation, second is capacity building. Whatever biodiversity is remaining and we are trying to maintain and protect that, through innovative approaches, conservation agreement. So we started talking to people that instead of giving your forest for cutting, for firewood to a contractor, why don't you enter into an agreement with us and uh, we can give you more benefits. Number one, we'll see to it that our benefits will be equal or more than what good contractor was giving you. Then we will build your capacity. We'll see to it that we will try to enhance the quality of your forest. We tried to scale up the idea of conservation agreement, you know. We had pilots and they were fairly successful. People agreed to protect the forest with five years agreement uh, for 40 acres. Thankfully, with the support of CEPAF, we now have 2,400 acres of forest under conservation agreements and uh, about six to 700 acres of forest out of that is secured till 2023. The Southern Western Ghats uh, is probably one of the largest tracts of wet evergreen forest. The landscape where we are working is in the central part of the Southern Western Ghats. The Shankota Gap, or otherwise known as Aryan Kau Pass, is the natural break in the Western Ghats. Historically, for large mammals like the tiger and the elephant, it was all contiguous and animals could freely uh, move from the south to the north. So in that sense, this gap is crucial to maintain connectivity in populations. This landscape is not under any kind of uh, formal protection. It is outside a protected area. So the larger impacts are expansion of plantations. Other than that, you have impacts of a national highway, a railway line. Issue of restoring connectivity within this landscape needs a multi-pronged approach. So we started with surveys which largely relied on science surveys. So we wanted to see how each of these species are using this landscape. We intensively camera trapped to collect more evidence to see how animals were using uh, the landscape. One of the solutions that is required to address connectivity is that you need to engage with people who live in this landscape. The corridor typically passes through private land holdings and uh, there is a need to bring that land parcel into conservation. So we identified a handful of farmers who were willing to undertake certain activities which would benefit uh, biodiversity in general, for which they were getting paid. The activities could either be removal of certain threats, preserving uh, existing forested patches on their land, or it could have been uh, restoring some of the uncultivated land that they own. And they would receive payments based on their performance. For the tribes who worked with us, it would have been an additional source of income by engaging with us. Working with CPF has been beneficial 
towards uh, a better decision making process other than conservation itself i think the partnership has largely contributed to a huge amount of scientific work and this has helped us stay in this landscape address the problems rather than just do a quick study and exit from the landscape linking together through financial mechanisms key stakeholders in a position to conserve critical ecosystems with users of the services they deliver can bring benefits to both parties bridging this gap however requires innovation imagination and a multidisciplinary approach that combines elements of ecology economics and social science the conservationists featured here have tested new mechanisms with potential for wider replication in the western ghats and beyond <laughs>